the mission, should you choose to accept it, is to make a Hugh Ferris inspired image. Guys! New render challenge from D2. Who's excited? This guy. Today, we're gonna look at how I made the cover image. Hopefully, help you guys make yours. Let's get to it. So in case you guys don't already know, the good folks over at the D2 have just announced another render challenge. <laughs> I am so excited. Not only were they kind enough to invite me to be a judge, but they also let me pick the topic. So Hugh Ferris, mm, he is one of my all time favorites. I absolutely love his work and I cannot wait to see what you guys make being inspired by him. It's gonna be so good. If you wanna check out the announcement video with Jason, Fabio and I, there is a link down below and all the models that I used to create this image I'm giving away for free. You can head over to the D2 contest page if you want to check that out. And if you make something with it, be sure to tag me. I'd love to see it. <clears throat> okay, let's get to making this image. You guys are free to interpret this challenge mm, kind of however you want. As long as it looks Hue inspired, it's good to go. A few years ago, I used the Kitbash 3D Art Deco kit and made three studies of his work. So for this one, I wanted to make something new. Step one, I got inspired. If you don't own this book, you definitely should. I'll put a link below, especially if you're an ArcViz. Hugh Ferris was working kind of at the beginning of the skyscraper age, and he was kind of the guy to go to if you wanted to get your building built. His work to me is just so incredibly powerful. He has a very strong sense of composition, light and shadow. You can see all kinds of chiaroscuro going in into this image to really kind of frame what we're looking at to make sure that you're getting it and the impact of the building to me is just so incredibly visceral. Uh, I can't, you can't beat it really. I mean, look at this dude, he's just the best. And so if you don't own this book, pick it up, have a gander, do a Google search, do what you gotta do but looking through his work always makes me wanna make images. As the title of this book would suggest, The Metropolis of Tomorrow, a lot of this book is his vision for where cities are gonna go. So the scale gets really big, gets like very futuristic for the time. I think this was published in 1929, which puts him in my book way ahead of his time. But throughout it, you just see this amazing sense of composition and light that I, I can't get enough of. I mean, come on. Can't beat it. Okay, so once you've, uh, you know, had a look through and you're thoroughly inspired, time to figure out an image. When I don't know what I'm gonna make, and even frequently when I do, first step, Photoshop 2D thumbnails. Let's go. Generally when I paint thumbnails, I just paint a Z-depth layer, which is to say things get, that are far away from the camera get painted in a lighter color than the things closer to the camera. And usually that's enough for me to get a feeling for the composition and enough of a direction to hop into 3D. Here you can see I've already started putting in some of the highlights, painting in some of the shadows, now I'm starting to darken down the sky. The lighting and the highlights and the shadows in a Hugh Ferris style image or Hugh Ferris image are so integral to the composition that they're really hard to ignore. And if you're not focusing your composition around those aspects, the highlights, the shadows, then I think you might be missing the point in this one, or at least I felt like I was. So very quickly, we're starting to get some idea of the lighting. The scene here, as is common with the first thumbnail when I don't really have an idea, is kind of a generic canyon-like cityscape, I guess you could call it. And it's not so much an idea that I want to pursue as starting to get the brain and the hand connected and starting to kind of think through the problem. One of the things I didn't like about the cityscape is that it was really missing the immediacy or power of Fa Ferris's imagery. I wanted something that was a little bit more kind of visceral and in your face, literally in your face. Here you can see I've moved one building closer to the camera, made it more of the central focal point to the image, made it really truly a hero building. 
and let everything else kind of fall away. And that started to give this idea of what happens if we cut off the top of the building, which I think gives a huge sense of scale, which is a bit of a challenge in these landscape images. I don't think it's a coincidence that most of Ferris's work is in portrait format. He was looking, working generally with skyscrapers and a vertical composition allows you to fill that whole frame with the skyscraper. In a landscape image, it's a little bit more difficult for tall buildings. And I knew I wanted everything to feel massive, almost in a fantasy sense. And so now you can see this third thumbnail. We have these three large hero buildings in the center that are, you know, skyrocketing off the top of the page and creating what feels to me like a pretty dynamic and powerful composition. You have the light sweeping in from the right. Most of his images are kind of, they're short, sort of shot at nighttime, but there's like a artificial spotlight in there. It's generally speaking, most of his work, not all of it, but a decent amount of his work has a, a very cinematic sense of lighting as opposed to a natural or daylit sense. And I wanted that to come across in the image as a whole. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking about for the thumbnails here. This last thumbnail I'm trying is a variation on the third one. I quite liked the third one. I was pretty confident that that's what I was going to go with. And it is what I'm going to go with. But I wanted to try just one quick variation in my head of sort of sweeping the buildings in opposite direction. I don't think it was nearly as successful, but always worth trying. So with about 30 minutes of sketching out of the way, we have these four options and I really like this one. I feel like it's got a strong composition. I really like that it suggests there's some kind of focal point just off screen to the right. And we're gonna hop into 3D and see what we can get done with this thing. Because I wasn't gonna use any ready-made or pre-built assets making this image so that I could give away the free ones to you, I started this scene just with very simple geometry, starting to block out a camera uh, and the general forms of these buildings that I'm gonna need. I don't wanna do any more modeling than I have to. And so as soon as possible, I wanna get a block out in place. You can see here, I've already hit render. I have a very simple spotlight in the scene, which is a very Hugh Ferris way to light things. And I'm starting to block in some of the shadows. I'm throwing in a little bit of uh, atmospheric perspective and I'm going to throw in a little bit of uh, clouds kind of lower beneath the buildings here in a second and the goal here is just to get as much of the big things in place as quickly as possible I'm a big believer in pressing rendering render as quick as you can and here you can see that just in maybe 20 minutes 30 minutes of, of playing in 3d maybe less than that we already have a pretty close approximation to the thumbnail that we're gonna go with. Now, as fast as that was, and as simple as this image currently seems, that's kind of all the hard work. This is why I think composition and lighting is so important. Here we have an image that's pretty close to the composition sketch that we made, and is pretty close to the raw render and the final image as well. Really, it's just adding details at this point. Now, you all know how I feel about modeling. but you guys can pick up all these models from the D2 contest page. Are they the most amazing models in the world? No, definitely not. But they are amazing for bashing together a Hugh Ferris style mega scraper. So here, all I'm doing is I'm taking the simple building elements that I've put together and starting to skin the massings that we already have. It's just a matter of giving the light something to catch and cast shadows across and giving some sense of scale and detail to these big structures that we have. And pretty quickly, you can see down below, throwing a concrete texture uh, and, and very simple material onto the large buildings and starting to put a little bit of detail into this, it's starting to kind of look like a real image really, really quickly. And I'm not worried too much about overlapping geometry. I'm just placing things in as they look good. At some point, I'll start to kind of clean some of those up to make the forms a bit more legible and appealing. But right now, it's just get all of these pieces in there so that we have some kind of real building to look at. 
Here I'm dialing in some dirt settings for the concrete material. If you guys are using F-Storm, that'll already be in the file that I've uh, left for you guys. If you're using something else, you'll have to recreate that. But a little bit of dirt can go a long way, especially if you get those nice streaks and aged weathered look that uh, comes from rain and everything. But really, I mean, a couple of building models in there, this thing's looking, you know, kind of kind of like a finished image. Not a finished image, but an image. Something. It feels like the vision that I had beforehand and that's without even refining anything so now I'm going to go in and start to tweak and clean up some things so I was kind of thinking that maybe there'd be rooftops and terraces in the foreground coming off or leading up to these buildings depending on how you wanted to look at it so I put some a lamp in there just to give me sort of an idea what that might look like and I kind of like it. I play around a little bit here with uh, maybe if we give it some light coming through. F-Storm just released some actual volume materials, which is super awesome. So I play with that, and you're going to see I play with it a bit more, but I kind of quickly decide that rooftops isn't the way to go. And so here I am putting just a very simply modeled plane with a displaced rock texture from textures.com. Uh, it's way out of scale, and it's overly displaced. But it gives us this idea that there's some kind of rocky outcropping, which I think is more true to the concept sketch than the idea of terraces. And it gives these buildings the feeling that they're sitting on a precipice, which feels right to the initial thumbnail and feels right for these buildings. Like this is the edge of something and it's looking out towards something else. What that is, I'm not entirely sure, but it feels right for the image. So I dropped them in real quick. Right now you can see I'm placing just some sort of buttressing at the base where the building meets this ground. It's not very visible in the final image, but it gives some sort of distinction of where the building meets the ground, which is always a little bit helpful. If you just have the building run straight into the ground, it can be a little bit off-putting. So just something in there to give that sense. And now I'm putting these kind of pagodas into the scene I felt there should be something on that rocky outcropping. These guys, I kind of try a couple things here. So I put the lights on each one of the pagodas and it, I don't know, maybe it could work, maybe not. Uh, I wasn't crazy about it. Maybe the design language just was a little bit too jarring or maybe it's just that there are too many of them. I'm not entirely sure. But after playing around with a few different options of how these could maybe work, I quickly abandon them, they're, they're not working. And if something's not working, get rid of it. So after a little bit more noodling here, I go through and I model out one more little piece, which is this, it kind of looks like a bridge between two staircases, which doesn't really make sense. But in my head, it's kind of, you know, uh, you know the fireplaces in Harry Potter where how people get to the, the Ministry of Magic? I had this idea that this was like a security protocol. Like to get to these buildings, you first had to come to one of these, I don't know what they are, staircases, elevators, cross this bridge, and then you could go to the other one, like an air gap or something. I'm not sure what it is, but they feel a lot more of the world that this image is creating, this mega scraper something. I don't know. I like them though. So with those figured out and a couple of render elements in place for post-production, we're ready to hop back into Photoshop. Now, if I'm being honest, this rendering came out quite a bit closer to what I was imagining for the final image than I was expecting. I was expecting this to be pretty heavy on the post-production side of things. Really, I'm just adding some light and contrast to the whole image. And then I go through and kind of refine the atmosphere and some of the clouds and fogs to pull out some of those little entrance structures, portals that are in the foreground. Actually, the first images that I made, you remember those guys? They were much heavier in post. Let's have a look at those real quick. The high and very controlled contrast of Hugh Ferris can be pretty hard to get in 3D right out of the frame buffer. So if you find yourself struggling there, don't be afraid to really push it in post. So back to our cover image. The main concern that I have in post here is I'm trying to control all of the values so that contrast is just where I want it to be. Or that is to say, 
contrast is just where I want the viewer to look. So I want to emphasize the light coming in from this far right. You can see I'm using a cloud brush here to sort of brush in some cascading light. And I want there to be enough contrast in some of the foreground elements and the little bridges that they're legible, but not so much that they're making up the focal point of the image. So you can see I'm going through right now and selecting the top of this building just so I can wrap the light just a little bit more up, up above it, just to draw a little bit more attention to that and keep bringing the, it, the viewer back in towards the center of the image. And then I'm gonna go through and do a similar thing with all of these little, uh, I need a name for these things. The entrances, we'll call them. And I'm gonna start painting a whole bunch of like little bits of light just behind them so that you can read their silhouette, but only just ba barely. Here I'm kind of blurring out the background just a little bit more so that it, there's less detail means less interest, less people are going to look in that direction. I want those kind of buildings in the foreground, in the background to just barely be there, if that makes sense. So we're moving some of the surface detail and the value contrast inside of them makes them less present inside of the image. Similar here, I'm continuing to tweak the values. Flipping the canvas is always a good way to freshen up the eyes. And now I'm using a normals pass in uh, render elements just to select the forward facing sides of this building and brighten it up just a little bit, just so that there's a hint of detail still there. I'm gonna do the same for the top of these towers, again, using the normals pass to select the top surfaces. And I end up using this, I only wanted to use this initially right in the foreground here, or in this one little corner that I think is pretty important in the image. And I ended up liking the way it looked kind of throughout. So just painting uh, in the mask to control how much that was uh, affecting the image. Here I'm playing a around with a couple of film uh, presets, none of which I like. Tweaking a few things in camera raw. Again, I discard that, I don't like it. And now I'm just coming back in using the depth maps to paint in a little bit of extra detail into the foreground, just so I felt like a few places were falling a little bit too much into pure shadow. And I wanted just the hint of those rocky outcroppings. And so now finally we are in Analog Effects Pro and I'm just adding a bit of grain and a bit of noise, dirt, dust, and scratches and all those fun things that make things look a little bit less CG and a little bit more lived in, let's call them. And here's our final image. So folks, that is what I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you got a little bit of insight into my process for making an image in this style. I hope that you are just as excited to make a Hugh Ferris style image of your own as I am to see it. I cannot wait to see what the community produces over the next month. It's going to be amazing. Again, a huge, huge thank you to Jason and Fabio and the D2 for having me and for letting me pick the topic, which meant I got to pick my favorite topic, Hugh Ferris. Oh, I, I'm so excited, beyond excited. If you like this video and you wanna see what I have coming up next, make sure you subscribe. If you like this video and you wanna make it easier for other people to see it, toss it the old thumbs up. Lastly, if you have any questions, throw it in the comments below, or you can stop by my Twitch. I stream every Monday and Friday making art. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them there as well, and I would love for you guys to come and hang out. Uh, I'll put a link below. So that's it, guys. Um, until next time, be kind to one another, good luck with your images, and I can't wait to see what you make. Cheers, folks. Peace. Let's try that again, shall we?